Schultz, and I'm going to tell you about a project that our, my colleagues and I have started to look for homes for reminiscent base like genes at cross screen plants. So evolution results from the interaction of random processes, such as point mutation and gene duplication, which generate variation and diversity that are then filtered and winnowed by deterministic processes such as natural selection and functional constraint to give us the genotypes and phenotypes that we observe out there around us. And parallelism is uh, often very strong evidence of these deterministic processes in evolution. And we see parallelism across all kinds of traits in plants including parallelism in the specialized metabolites that plants produce. Here's one particularly salient example for this time in the morning, the parallel origin of caffeine in uh, tea and in coffee. So among plant specialized metabolites, uh, paralizidine alkaloids, which I may refer to as PAs, are one of the best studies examples of parallelism. Uh, so PAs have this characteristic structure with a nesting base conjugated to a nesting acid. And here you can see some of the structural variation, but also the consistent uh, presence of that nesting base. And pyrolizidine alkaloids occur in 13 plant families distributed across the uh, angiosperm phylogeny. And so this really looks like repeated evolution of, the, of these compounds. Uh, however, um, as Michael Wink uh, has emphasized, shared presence of specialized metabolites among distantly related taxa can also result from homology uh, and repeated loss or silencing of an ancestral rhizomatic pathway. So if we look at a species tree with the distribution of, um, of uh, phenotypes across the tips, across the species, we can interpret it in two ways. One is homology, a single origin of the compounds followed by multiple losses, or parallelism with multiple independent origins of these compounds. And so one way we can distinguish between these two alternative hypotheses is by looking at the evolution of the catalytic enzymes that are involved in synthesizing these compounds. In the case of pyrolizidine alkaloids, we know of only one of the catalytic enzymes involved. That is homospermidine synthase, or HSS, which catalyzes the formation of homospermidine, which is the precursor of the uh, nesting base that's at the core of the pyrolizidine alkaloids. And we know that Homospermidine synthase, HSS, evolved by a duplication and subfunctionalization of another gene called deoxyhypusin synthase, or DHS. So DHS is a ubiquitous gene of eukaryotic primary metabolism. It catalyzes, its primary function is catalyzing the activation of this transcription factor called EIF5A. And as a side reaction, it can, to a very low level, synthesize homospermidine. So after duplication, the HSS gene uh, evolves to lose the uh, EIF5A activation activity and become much more efficient at producing homospermidine. And so um, when we look at the predictions of the homology hypothesis, homology of the compounds versus parallelism of the compounds, they make very different predictions about the structure of the uh, gene tree. So the homology hypothesis predicts a single origin of homospermidine synthase followed by multiple losses, multiple pseudogenization events. Whereas the parallelism hypothesis predicts multiple duplications, multiple uh, independent origins of homospermidine. So last year, my colleagues and I looked at um, the evolution of uh, the HSS genes in seven uh, taxa that are known to produce 
pyrolizidine alkaloids and have a functional HSS, and we showed seven parallel origins. So you can see here, uh, in black, we have the DHS gene, and then we have the duplication, and in red, the HSS gene. And we show parallel origins, naposinase, boraginase, all these different families. Remarkably, not only is the same ancestral gene, DHS, always recruited into the PA biosynthetic pathway by a, a formation of a duplication and formation of HSS, we also see the same amino acid motif evolving over and over again. So in, in DHS, we have this characteristic IN amino acid motif, and every time HSS has evolved, that IN amino acid motif uh, has uh, become a BD amino acid motif. So again, that has happened seven times. And uh, the only uh, HSS that we found without that BD amino acid motif is in Heliotropium indicum, which has an AD motif. Um, furthermore, uh, there's multiple lines of evidence that show that uh, reduction or loss of HSS function is accompanied by reversion from the HSS BD motif to the DHS IN motif, or to an intermediate motif with BN or ID. I'm just going to show you one example here. This is Ipomia alba. This is a species that has lost, it doesn't produce pyrolizidine alkaloids. That HSS has lost, uh, is, doesn't function as well as the HSSs of related species. And we see it has reverted to the IN motif from the BD motif. So now uh, my colleagues and I, we've taken uh, this preliminary work and we decided to expand it looking across all green plants. And our objectives are to answer a couple of questions. So how conserved are these identified DHS and HSS motifs and the intermediate motifs? How many times have HSS-like genes evolved? And have HSS-like genes evolved in taxa that are not known to synthesize pyrolizidine alkaloids? So far, we've only looked at it for them in species that make pyrolizidine alkaloids. And how much evidence is there for these two alternative models for recent parallelism versus ancient orthology of these HSS-like genes? So first I have to define what I mean by DHS and HSS-like genes, because DHS and HSS, uh, we, can, we know them by their catalytic function, and I'm not looking at their catalytic function in this analysis. So I've defined DHS-like genes as uh, genes that have that IN motif and are single copy or multi-copy, and HSS-like genes have uh, the VD motif, or an intermediate motif, VN or ID, or uh, like the example of Ipomia alba, they can have the IN motif, but they're nested in a clade of sequences with an ancestral VD motif. Furthermore, HSS-like genes must be paralogous to a DHS-like gene, because DHS, remember, is essential for eukaryotic metabolism, so every species must have a DHS-like gene. And we usually see an accelerated rate of evolution in the HSS-like genes relative to the paralogous DHS-like gene. So what did we do? Uh, so we did blast searches of a couple of um, mostly transcriptome uh, databases. And we pulled out a bunch of sequences, which we filtered down to get uh, more intact uh, sequences. This is a, a gene with seven exons. So we only took sequences that were more than 800 base pairs and had an intact open reading frame covering at least exons three to seven, so that would include the area where we see this motif. Did a translation alignment and built a gene tree. And I am, um, and here is our sampling. So we have really good sampling of the angiosperm orders. We got sequences from 50 of 64 angiosperm orders. Uh, sparser sampling of the rest of, of the Ridae planta for a total of almost um, 1,700 unique sequences. Oh, and we also have all orders sampled where pyrolizidine alkaloids have been reported. Okay, 
so I am not going to try to show you that gene tree. I'm just going to give you a couple of uh, vignettes from it to answer our questions. So how conserved is that motif? Uh, it's actually highly conserved. I found only two species that had a different motif. One of these is Posidonia oceanica, which is uh, seagrass, um, which has an MN motif, but Posidonia australis has the characteristic DHSIN motif. The other example that has a different motif is uh, Heliotropium indicum, which is actually functionally characterized HSS uh, from that species. However, we have sequences from four other uh, Heliotropium species here, and they all have the BD motif. And given how conserved this motif is otherwise, I think my first hypothesis for these uh, aberrant motifs is perhaps there might be a sequencing error, and that's something we need to look into. So um, how many times have HSS and HSS-like genes evolved? So perhaps uh, 18 times to perhaps as many as 25 times at multiple phylogenetic depths. So we see uh, duplications giving rise to HSS-like genes at all taxonomic levels from within species to prior to the divergence of orders. And I'm not going to be able to talk about all of these, but if you see any taxon names up there that look interesting to you, I'd like to love to tell you more about it. Uh, so that's 18 duplications where we see HSS and DHS paralogs. And then we have seven more instances where we see origin of eight genes with an HSS-like motif, but without an identifiable DHS-like paralog. So let me show you a couple of these, what these look like. So the first example is in uh, the genus Solanum. And in Solanum, we see uh, two duplications giving rise to two clades of DHS-like genes, which are highlighted in green, and one clade of HSS-like genes. And you can see the uh, longer branch lengths in the HSS-like genes. So there's the uh, HSS and DHS of Solanum tuberosum and the HSS and DHS of Solanum lycopersicum. And then for uh, Solanum sesimbrifolium, the DHS is actually in the other clade. So one thing that's interesting here is we know a lot about the specialized metabolism of tomatoes and potatoes, and they do not have pyrolizidine alkaloids. But they do have compounds like this. This is solamine, and you see it actually looks an awful lot like homospermidine. So this might be an example of a different biosynthetic pathway that has introduced that has recruited HSS. So that's something to look into. Another example within the family, uh, within the genistoid clade. So we have a number of uh, PA producing taxa here, such as Crotalaria and Adenocarpus. So again, it looks like we have two duplications. Uh, one includes the DHS-like gene of Sephori and the HSS of Crotalaria, and then two clades of DHS-like genes. One has only sequences from Crotalaria, the other from Crotalaria and Genistein. So there's the HSS and DHS of uh, Crotalaria spectabilis, and in um, uh, Crotalaria juncasia, we have uh, two uh, DHSs in those two plates. And if we look at the gene tree, it looks like this is where the, those duplications happened, and only Crotalaria and Genistee are known to produce PAs. So finally, what looks like an ancient origin of, an, of the HSS that we see in Orchidaceae, this is a taxon that produces PAs. So here's the gene tree. So we have a clade of Orchidaceae PAs and HSS-like genes from Pandanales, Asparagales, and Liliales. And here are the DHS-like genes from those taxa. And so if we look at the species tree, it looks like this duplication happened before the divergence of Pandanales and Asparagales, estimated 128 million years ago. So that's a very old gene duplication. And so the question I want to come back to is, did the common ancestor of Pandanales and Asparagales actually produce pyrolizidine alkaloids? So this is our gene tree, but does it actually, oops, does it actually predict this scenario with uh, ancestral presence of 
probabilistic amyloids. I'd say we have to be careful in making that interpretation because we have the example of selenum now, where HSS has been recruited into what looks like a different biosynthetic process. So I think um, we would need additional evidence from additional genes of the PA of biosynthesis to see if they also arose at the same time as that HSS. So a few conclusions, future directions. Uh, these genes are very conserved. Um, they've evolved many times, and they have evolved in taxa not known to synthesize PAs. And there's uh, abundant evidence both for recent parallelism and ancient orthology. If you're interested in this, my student is presenting this afternoon, and I'd like to acknowledge uh, people who made the sequences and my funding source, and I'm out of time, so I will pass the baton on to the next speaker. Thank you.